Hi. And what we have here is a question on finding turning points. So you might like to pause the video, have a go at this, or if you've tried this in the past and having problems, then the work solution will appear very shortly. Okay, well, what we've got here is that in figure one, it shows a sketch of the curve C with equation Y equals E to the power X root three. And then that's multiplied by sine of three X, where X is given in radians. It's greater than or equal to minus pi upon three radians, but less than or equal to pi upon three radians. And what we've got to do is find the X coordinate of the turning point P on the, this curve C, for which X is greater than zero. And we need to give the answer as a multiple of pi. So where do we start with this? Well, first of all, I know that at P, the gradient at a turning point would be zero. And to get the gradient, we need to differentiate our equation with respect to x. So let's just start by putting that equation down. We've got that y equals e to the power x root 3. And all of that is multiplied by the sine of 3x. Now in order to differentiate this, we've got the product of two functions of x. We've got this function of x, e to the power x root 3, and we've got this function of x, the sine of 3x. And because we can't multiply these out, we need to use what is called the product rule for differentiation. And you should know this, I'm just going to quickly write this down for you, that if you've got two functions of x being multiplied together, say like y equals uv, then it can be shown that dy by dx is given by one part, say u, multiplied by the differential of the other part, dv dx, and then it's plus, and then we do v times the differential of the previous part, v times du dx. So this is called the product rule, and you normally do find this in your formula book, but uh, I would still encourage you to learn it. Okay, so product rule. So in doing this one then, I'm going to say u is the blue part here and v is the red part. And so you should be able to go straight into this. Therefore, dy by dx is going to equal. Well, we take one part, u part, let's just write it down e to the power x root 3, and we now multiply this by the differential of sine 3x. And this requires the use of the chain rule. If you're unfamiliar with these kind of differentials, then you just go on my website, there's plenty of examples on this using the chain rule. So I'm assuming that you're familiar with that, and to differentiate this, it will be the differential of sine 3x is going to be cos 3x, we we'll just mark that in as cos 3x, and we multiply all of this by the differential of 3x, which is 3. Okay, so that part is the chain rule. Now we have the plus, and we put down sine 3x, and we now multiply this, make sure you put it in brackets, by the differential of e to the x root 3 e to say ax where a is a constant always gives you a e to the ax so the constant here is root 3 so when you differentiate this you end up with root 3 e to the power x root 3 all right now we need to clean this up what i notice is that e to the power x root 3 occurs in both terms. So I'm going to want to take this out as a common factor. So we'll put equals down here and we've got e to the power x root 3. And then for this term it's better written as 3 cos 3x. So I'll just put 3 cos 3x. And 
for this next term here, let's put the root 3 first. So we got root 3 sine 3x. So plus root 3 multiplied by the sine of 3x. Now we know that at p, being a turning point, the gradient is going to be 0. And the gradient, remember, is given by dy by dx. So at p, let's just say that dy by dx equals 0. So what does that mean? It means that therefore this equals 0. So we've got e to the x root 3 multiplied by 3 cos 3x then plus root 3 sine 3x. Well that has to equal 0. So if we just come down here now Let's see where this is going to take us. Now we've got a product here of two factors, e to the x root 3 and 3 cos 3x plus root 3 sine 3x, this factor here in brackets. Product that equals 0. So therefore either one of these factors could be equal to 0. Well I know that e to the x root 3 cannot equal 0. I know that because if I was to sketch the graph of say e to the x, we'll make it a bit small here, okay, just cause we've got to squeeze quite a bit in, but if I was to sketch that graph, the graph of e to the x looks something like this. It never crosses the x-axis, alright. If I look at e to the x root 3, it's just a steeper version of this but still never crosses the x-axis. So I know that that value, e to the x root 3, never equals 0. Let's just write that in. e to the power x root 3 does not equal 0. So it must mean that this factor equals 0. So therefore we've got 3 cos 3x then plus root 3 sine 3x must be equal to 0. Now to solve this trigonometric equation I've got two trigonometric functions here. I've got the cos 3x and the sine 3x and really I need to get one trigonometric function. And I can do that very easily because if I divide each term by cos 3x I'll create tan 3x here because sine of an angle over the cosine of the same angle is the tan of that angle. So let's divide by cos 3x throughout. So if I do that, we get just simply 3 in this term. And then here, we get root 3 sine 3x over cos 3x, which is the equivalent of root 3 multiplied by tan of 3x. And don't forget, we still divide 0 by cos 3x, but that gives us 0. So if I rearrange this, okay, to make tan 3x the subject. If I subtract 3 from both sides, I get root 3 tan 3x equals minus 3. And then if I divide by root 3, I end up with tan of 3x equals minus 3 over the square root of 3. And root 3 will divide into 3 root 3 times. Or you could look at it as times in top and bottom by root 3 and you'll get 3 root 3 over 3 which cancels down to root 3. So not forgetting this minus though we've got minus root 3 so tan 3x equals minus root 3. And to find 3x now we just need to inverse tan both sides so therefore 3x must be equal to the inverse tan okay, of minus root 3. Now when I've got something like this to do, I like to draw a quadrant diagram. So we'll just draw our diagram like so. This would be the equivalent of naught radians. Now we'll we're taking the tan of a negative value and tan is negative in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So I've drawn a line equally inclined to this horizontal here and you should mark in these two angles as being the same. 
So that means that a possible solution for 3x would be this one round here. Another one would be the one round here. But we're looking at the first positive value of x, so it's got to be this one here. Now when you inverse tan minus root 3 on your calculator, you'll find that you get minus 60 degrees if you're in degrees mode, which is equivalent to minus pi upon 3 radians if you're in radians mode. Okay, And that would correspond to this angle here. I'll just mark it in green here. It would be a turn in this direction, a negative turn. We're not interested in a negative value of x. That would correspond to this point here. What we're interested in is the first positive value. So we've got to take this red one here. But knowing that when we do the inverse tan of minus root 3, we get essentially minus pi upon 3 radians, or the equivalent of minus 60 degrees. It tells us that this little blue angle in here, if I can just squeeze it in there, is pi upon 3 radians. Okay, It might show minus pi upon 3 because it's a negative term. That magnitude of that angle is pi upon 3 radians. That means this one here is pi upon 3 radians. Let's just mark it in there, pi upon 3. So that makes 3x pi radians for half a turn minus pi upon 3, which is 2 thirds pi. So what we've got then is that therefore 3x equals 2 thirds pi or 2 pi upon 3. And so if we now divide both sides by 3 we get the x coordinate at p okay x at p equals a third of 2 thirds pi which is 2 ninths pi 2 pi over 9. So I hope you got this bit here a bit tricky just on this bit you could use a graphical method if you want, it's up to you, but I always prefer using the quadrant method. So there you go, x of p then, 2pi over 9.